What's new guys? Alex Chasing back here with a brand new video. Hope you great day for your night. If you guys are in this world, in today's video, gonna be the winners and losers of the 2019 NBA Draft. I'm also gonna be making one more video on this topic. It's just strictly a Celtics video of what it's part of it, part draft video and part like what I think the team's gonna be looking like next year. I just wanted to get that out there because I've been asked to do a lot of videos surrounding the draft, but I cannot make 10 in a day. So they're gonna come out, they'll be all done by no later than Wednesday. All the videos will be done by no later than Wednesday. So just I just wanna say that, uh, guys, I'm listening to all your videos. I wanna make all your videos because I really love and I love making the videos you suggest me because that means you guys are gonna watch them and you guys enjoy them. That's the main reason why I make videos because I want people to enjoy them. I want people to have fun watching them. I want people to learn. So that is what today, that's what all my videos are. But today's video is gonna be a very, what my feelings are, maybe you can learn a, bit of, a little bit of it. And today are the winners and losers of the 2019 NBA Draft. We'll start off with the winners. For each category, winners and losers, I have three picks. And the rest of the teams, like they did fine. Like for example, the Knicks and Grizzlies, they did perfectly fine. They got John Morant, RJ Barrett. Fantastic. They're, they're, not, they're not a winner though, because they didn't make thousands of moves, tons of moves. Like my first team on this list, the New Orleans Pelicans. They had the first pick. Yeah, they selected Zion, which helps in for this category being the number one team in the winners but not just that they made trades on draft night they traded with the hawks to get jackson hayes who, who was an amazing young center he was in my uh draft uh draft um video where i projected my mock draft i couldn't get the words out my mock draft video and i did not project him to go this high i projected him to go to the hawks at 10 not at 8 but he's going, looks like he's going to New Orleans because they have a proposed trade. None of the trades go through till like June 30th, June 1st when free agency happens. But they pretty much all do. Like they don't really decline any trades that, that, that often. The last one they declined was the Chris Paul trade. But that's because David Stern, Eric David Stern, I think that was his name. The old commissioner was a goofball. Anyways, the Pelicans made this fantastic trade to pick up Jackson Hayes. And I think Jackson Hayes will be a perfect young center because they have Jaheel Okafor. They don't really, really have a uh, star center well, or like a star center or like a center that they know is going to be on the team next year or for years to come. So Jackson Hayes is a great pickup. He could He's just going to be part of that young rebuild they got going on in New Orleans. They also made some other moves in this draft that are just really, really good. He, like, uh, I don't remember the GM's name, something Griffith, Griffin. He got he got assets. He's doing a little bit of a Danny H. He got assets for years to come, which is just what you want to do to keep that rebuild in flow. And Pelicans, man, if you're a Pelicans fan, you've got some real, real good assets. If you want to make a trade, if you want to get, get rid of Drew Holiday and package some picks, you could get some really, really good other picks, like closer to like number one picks again. Or you could get a star player, like, I don't know, whoever whoever wants to be traded. So that's really, really good for the Pelicans. They have some real upside. I cannot wait to watch this team in five years when they're all get to their potential, then 10 years when they're competing for champions on championships on championships. This team's really excited. And as you can tell by my enthusiasm, I cannot wait to watch this team for years to come. My number two team on the winners category is my team, the Boston Celtics. Now they had the 14th pick and they had the 20th and 22nd pick. They also traded the 20, they also traded for the 24th pick with the 76ers. So they were making moves on draft night as well. People don't really give the respect to Romeo Langford that I think he deserves. I was watching his highlights all that well, not all last night, but for a while last night. And the kid's a baller. I knew who he was from like loading in draft classes on 2K. Yeah, I'm a 2K nerd. It's okay. I, I love it. I just do millions of rebuilds on every day. But I just know him from 2K, and he progresses very well in 2K, so hopefully he can do that in real life. I know it's not a very good example, but hopefully he can do that. And I was watching his highlights. Kid is an absolute... He's not like a finesser, but he's like smooth with like He got that little nice step back. He gets enough space to shoot the three or just like little shots like that. He's a very efficient player. It looks like he also has some hops as he laid a two-stepper into the paint and yammed it on someone, which is disgusting. I like jumped out of my bed. I was so freaking hyped watching those highlights. And then we also had the 20th pick where we tr got Matisse Thibel, but we traded him to the 76ers, which also followed up with us getting the 24th pick as well. But the, at the 22nd pick, we got Grant Williams, who looks like a solid guy. His mom works for NASA or something crazy like that, and he's super smart. He's a little bit like a Jalen Brown. He's a little too smart for his own good, but it's okay. You know, Jalen Brown's a very, very good player. And then we have uh, 24. We got Ty Jerome, which we got traded to the Boston Celtics, but then the, but then we traded it to the Suns. So we flipped that pick. So we got the pick, and then we flipped that pick, traded him to the Suns. We also traded Aaron Baines to the Suns, which gave us more cap space. Forgot about that. 
And then at the 33rd pick, we tr this is the pick we got. Also, another pick we got from the 76ers. We got Carson Edwards, who's a little bit taller than Isaiah Thomas, but he looks like he'd be like a next Isaiah Thomas. He averaged 24 in college. He looks like a really, 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 he's one of the best scorers in the draft. So he looks like a really promising young talent. And then we also had the 51st pick where we got Tremont Waters. Not sure how much he's going to play or what he can do, but pretty solid pickup. And I think we were the second winners of this year's draft, just based off the assets we got for future years. And after, I'll say, I don't really know a lot of Tremont Waters, but I'll say the three really, 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 in my eyes, they have all-star potential picks we got with the 20, uh, 14th, 20, uh, 14th, 22nd and 14th well you know the three picks that we had that we kept i think we have some really really star potential but i don't really know about tremont waters my third team on the winners list it has to be the denver nuggets i just want to check here yeah they had one pick in this draft i just want to make sure i don't want to seem like a goofball yeah they had actually no picks in this draft if i'm not wrong let me know if i'm wrong i'm looking at it right here they had no picks in this draft but they managed to trade with the Heat, who selected Bull Bull at the 44th pick. So if the Heat kept this guy, I actually, they actually would have been above the Celtics. They had Tyler Hero, who the Celtics really wanted, but uh, the Heat picked right, right. Pat Riley and the Heat picked them right before us. So they definitely pissed off Danny Ainge. I was in the building, and I got really pissed off because I love Tyler Hero because he saw my draft video. I met him. He's a super nice guy. I talked to him for actually two minutes, by the way. I'm not even kidding. I talked to him for like two minutes. He was with, like, with, with a bunch of fans. He was just talking to us. Oh, I don't really, really know a ton about him. I just know he's an absolute beast. I've been watching him since high school. I was watching him on YouTube in high school, like on ball, all ball his life and stuff like that. Man's an absolute shooter. He shot, like, like I said, he got made like 85 out of 100 shots. The Celtics really wanted him. But Pat Riley and the Heat did us a solid, not really, and got him the pick right before us. But we got Romeo Langford. He's a Celtic. I got to love him. Anyways, Bull Bull. And the Denver Nuggets are the third team on this list because the Nuggets, they traded for someone who, personally, I was waiting for him to get picked in the lottery. I know he has injury issues, blah, 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 blah. But if you watch him, the man can play. Like, come on, let's be honest here. He's a point guard at 7'3", who can shoot the ball better than some actual point guard, shooting guards that are supposed to shoot in this league. He's, yeah, he's a little skinny framed, but he's going to put on a little more muscle. Yeah, he's not going to put on too much muscle because it's not really in his jeans. As you can see, his dad was an absolute twig. But he was an efficient basketball player. And like I said, he has the dribbling ability of a point guard. We've never seen anything like this. This guy's a special talent. 43 teams messed up, or 43 slots messed up on not picking him. The Heat did pick him. I was so hyped to see him in Vice City. But you know what? The Denver Nuggets traded for him. And that's a winner. Him, Jokic, you can put one of them at the power forward. Maybe Bull Bulk is a little bit more versatile than Jokic. Jokic is a pure big man who can shoot. He can spread the floor, but he's not really going to give you those dribbling moves. He can pass the ball. They have a very, very youthful team with the way the game is played these days. They have Jokic who can shoot the three, spread the floor. Not super athletic, but then you got Bull Bull. You put him at the power forward. Super athletic, 7-3. Can also play a little point guard, bring the ball up. You got MPJ, Michael Porter Jr. He's going to come into this league. He could be really, really solid. I don't know if he'll ever be like an all all-star or like multiple-time all-star but he looks like he could be a really really solid player to start in this league 15 plus points a game I don't know that's what I'm guessing because people say guys are gonna be all-stars we gotta like you gotta let you gotta see this is just my prediction I could be completely wrong now let's go to the losers and the people that are losers yeah either I don't agree with what they did or they just messed up bad like when I say bad really bad my number one team for the teams that did it bad cleveland cavaliers what are you thinking am i am i stupid or did you guys pick colin sexton in last year's draft not five ten years ago last year's draft and you come into this draft and you pick darius garland as another point guard and this man darius garland he's not like six five six six like alonzo ball that you could move to shooting guard nope I don't know his exact type, but I saw him. He was there. He's like 6'1", 6'2". And you know you're not going to put Colin Sexton at the shooting guard because he cannot shoot like a shooting guard should be able to. So I don't know what they were thinking here. They could have picked Jarrett Culver, who's one of the best shooters in this draft, if not the best shooter, and he's a pure shooting guard. They could have picked Cam Reddish, small forward. You could have moved him to shooting guard to have some more size at the shooting guard. I don't know what they could, could have picked Cameron Johnson if you really wanted to go really high. Cameron Johnson at 11 with the Timbles was high enough. But anyways, I don't know what they were thinking here. They could have even picked Kobe White, who could move to shooting guard, who's like 6'6", 6'5", as a point guard. I don't know why they picked a small guard. 
I'm not sure how Colin, I'm not sure how tall Colin Sexton is, but you're sure as hell not gonna put him at shooting guard because, like I said, he cannot shoot. He can shoot enough, but he's not gonna be. He's not like a pure shooting guard like a Clay Thompson or anybody like Jimmy Butler. Where you can put him at shooting guard and they'll actually shoot the ball. I don't know what they're thinking here. I don't know if they're gonna be like, oh, Darius Garden, you're gonna be a pure six man in your whole career. I don't know if they're gonna use him as a trade asset to get a better shooting guard. I don't know what they're thinking here. Terrible, terrible, terrible pick. They should. I, I put. They should have picked Jarrett Culver, or if DeAndre Hunter was still on the board, which he wasn't, but they should have had Jarrett Culver, and the Suns should have got Darius Garland or Kobe White, because they need a point guard, so they kind of actually screwed the Suns over, if we're going to be honest here, because they, they picked Jarrett Culver, and they don't need a shooting guard. But Jarrett Culver, as I read here, got traded to the Timberwolves, so he didn't even go to the Suns. So that's, just, that's also, I don't know, some of these teams really suck at drafting. Like, I'm not even like a, a NBA GM. I'm not as smart as any of those people. And I can have enough sense to say, that's stupid. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the second loser of this draft. The second loser of this draft, it's got to be the Pacers. It's kind of like another one of the situations like the Cavs. They already have a great, young, promising center with Miles Turner. You cannot move him to the power forward because he'll shoot a three. He'll probably go one for ten. He cannot stretch the floor like I said. He cannot shoot the three. Goga, Bittaze is one of those guys that I watched. He's a pure center, not spread the floor at all. He'll get the, he'll probably, he's probably gonna be one of the most efficient rebounders as a rookie, but he'll get you some points in the low post, kind of like a Rudy Gobert, not as lengthy and tall and as, I'm not really sure how good he is on defense, but he, I, from what I see from the highlights I saw at the stadium, well, at the draft, he's a pure, pure rebounder if this was gonna be in 2K. But I'm not sure what his other badge would be because I didn't really see much else he did. Yeah, he can score in the low post, but Pacers, another one of those teams, they have that position locked. They have a great center with Miles Turner. He needs a little bit more training, blah, 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 blah. Maybe he'll acquire a really good three-point shot. I know Goga will never acquire a really good three-point shot. Just looking at him like he's not a three-point shooter. The way he plays, unless he like really trains it. He's not going to be a three-point shooter, so I don't know what they were thinking with this pick. They do not need another center unless they're going to think about moving Miles Turner to the four, put it Goga in the five, but you're not going to be able to spread the floor at all because neither of them can shoot very well. Or you have Goga come off the bench, but like, why would you do that? You want to play your young guys. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Maybe they put Goga off the bench, but then you're going to like slow down his like progression. Uh, 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 another one of those picks, it's a head scratcher. Anyways, let's go to the third one. And these guys, wow, really messed up. Like, I was laughing there. And these kids, uh, it's nuts. So the third team on my list for the loser of this draft has got to be the Magic. They pick Chuma Okiki out of Auburn at 16. Now, Chuma Okiki, yeah, fantastic player when he played at Auburn. But at 16, two slots out of the lottery? Nicole, Ale Nicole Alexander Walker was picked after him. Luka Samic was picked after him. Matisse Thybul, Brendan Clark, Grant Williams, Ty Drum, Nazir Little, Keldon Johnson, Kevin Porter Jr. was even picked after him. Nicholas Claxton, Casey Akpala, Carson Edwards, Cody Martin, Daniel Gafford, all these guys. You even go to the late, late second round. Jalen McDaniels, Kyle Guy, Jalen Hands, I even think, is better than him. But no, and that was at 55, Jalen, 55, 56, Jalen Hands was picked at. But no, the Magic pick, Chuma Okiki, at the 16th pick. It was so funny. These kids in front of me were like, Chuma Okiki. They, they couldn't even pronounce his name. Like, they, they had no clue who he was. I knew who he was just because I'm like Auburn, like watching March Madness. But like, at, and the funny thing is he wasn't even at the draft. That was also sad. He probably didn't even think he was going to get a pick. But no, the Magic, they're really great at drafting. I don't know if you could tell. They, I mean, besides Dwight Howard, Eric Gordon... Jonathan Isaac, eh, he's solid. You know, he did, he's, he's still young. He still has time to grow, but he looks like he might be a little bit of a bust. He's not really doing anything too amazing. Chuma Okiki, like, honestly, Nicole Alexander Walker they could have had. They could have had at 30, who he fell. I did not expect this to happen. They could have had Kevin Porter Jr., who actually the Detroit Pistons have. That's a great pickup for the Pistons because I don't really have, like, a shooting guard. I know they have Langston Galloway, but what's he do? I don't know, man. Magic, you guys got to fix some stuff. Let's check out the other picks that Magic have. 
because I'm sure they messed up another. Oh yeah, here they are. Here it is. Hold on. Magic. They picked up Talon Horton Tucker, who they actually traded to the Lakers. So I'm sure they got some assets there, which is solid. But they really picked Chuma Okiki at 16. That just really, really made them on. The, like they, that that just pick individual might be one of the worst things I've ever seen. But watch me be completely wrong, and the rest of the world be wrong. And Chuma Okiki becomes top five guard ever. He, that could happen, but. As of right now, laughing stock of a pick. Anyways, hope you guys did enjoy this video. This is the winners and losers of the 2019 NBA Draft. Like I said, hope you guys did enjoy this video. And like always, peace.